there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to take some time to talk about one of my favorite topic, self-care. A few months ago, I have posted my very first silent vlog on this channel called Time for Self-Care. And that video is, up until now, one of the most viewed videos on my page. I am here today to actually share a little bit more about that self-care practice and maybe just share something that I do on a daily basis in order to inspire you to improve and get better with your self-care routine. A few days ago, I posted on my social medias a simple question. Are you practicing self-care? The majority of the answers were, I wish I had more time for it, which I find it very, very sad, but not because you're not practicing self-care, but only because I feel, why don't we have time to love ourselves? Why don't we have the time to do things that make us happy? This is why I'm here today trying to share what I do in order to inspire you to then take these small micro steps in order to improve your life. I just want to divide this video into three main pillars. The first one, it's going to be the emotional self-care practice. The third one will be the physical, and then the third one will be the mental one. Now, the reasons why I've divided these topics into three, it's because I want you to see that it's not only about physical things that self-care is about, but there's also so much more. Now, when I wake up in the morning, the first things I do is to go downstairs, I make myself my nice cup of coffee with my oat milk and then I sit down in the sofa. Now for me that moment is where I am close to myself. It's the time that I take in the morning to actually set the tone for the rest of my day. That makes me happy. That is part of my self-care routine. For some of you, meditation, mindful living, all of that kind of things might be nonsense but I really want to challenge you to take few minutes every day to actually meditate. In fact, meditation is one of the first things that you should do for your emotional self-care practice. Now, being able to sit down with your emotion is absolutely crucial in order to be happy. You need to understand where you're at today, physically, mentally, and spiritually. I normally drink my coffee, take a few sips in total silence. I pick up my phone, I normally use apps such as my Aura Ring app and there are multiple apps that you can use and most of them are actually free but the best one is simply your timer. Now I'm one of those that I have some days that I want to be led and other days that I'm happy to be in total stillness. My piece of advice if you don't want to pay for any subscriptions or if you don't want to do anything that is fancier than simply set a few minutes on your phone and wait for the alarm to go then you use your phone. I normally do practice mindfulness for about three, five or 10 minutes, depending on how much time I've got before I need to go to work. You might know this already, I am a yoga teacher and most of my day starts very early, so my alarm is usually around five o'clock in the morning. And then by 6 a.m. I need to leave my house because most of my classes are very early in the morning too and I have to commute a lot. So I'm spending many hours in the car. So before I do all of that, before I step out of my house and drive to go to yoga studios, I take this time. I set the alarm, I sit down, and I just simply breathe. Now, whenever I have 10 minutes, I also love to practice alternate nostril pranayama. And then if you're new to the yoga world, it's absolutely fine. It's a very simple breathing technique. Now, the alternate nostril pranayama can help you manage stress and anxiety. It lowers your blood pressure, it lowers your heart rate, improves your lungs function, and also improves your brain functions. When the alarms goes on, I move into my mental activities, which are stimulating my brain into doing things that makes me happy. As I'm planning to travel to Japan in December, I wanted to come back to study Japanese. A few years ago, I bought a book and it's actually an amazing book. It's very well written and it's so simple for those who are trying to learn Japanese in a way that it's self-led. But I have started doing Duolingo recently and I am on my strike 126 or 27 days, I need to check. But anyway, so I am actually trying to do a daily dose of Japanese because I want to keep my brain challenged. 
Another part of my mental and emotional is to actually read and take some time to read my book. It really depends about how much time I've got in the morning. After that, I'm gonna take my first few boxes on the app that I've downloaded called Structured. Then I just drive to work, I teach my yoga classes, and most of the time, even there, I need to take the time to prepare the room, then wait for my students, welcome my students, set the tone for the class, and then go live. After me teaching yoga, I normally try to use the time that I've got in between classes to be very proactive. Part of my self-care comes to the physical part. Of course, some of you think as a yoga teacher, you are constantly doing exercise, so you don't need any more exercises, but I need to go to the gym as everybody else. I need to do practice yoga as a student and not only as a teacher. And that's why I'm trying to go to the gym at least three times a week. Another aspect of mindful living and also self-care is that you need to do things that make you happy. Now, I am constantly on the go and things that makes me happy are sometimes very basics and you might be performing these self-care actions already, such as going to your favorite coffee place and grab your cup of coffee. Sometimes I do grab an ice latte or a nice matcha latte. I do very things that makes me happy. I also take time to do my skincare routine, washing my face with some soaps, scrub my face with a scrub, apply some creams, and all of these kind of things are making me feel good in my own skin. Part of your self-care routine can be go to the barber here and then. I know that after COVID, most of us, we start cutting our own hair and I had such a terrible hair during lockdown. And so as soon as the world reopened, I choose to go to the barber because I think they do a better job than me. Going to the barber is just such an experience and it's just that time that you're taking to love yourself, to, to really appreciate these moments where you can just sit down, lay back, do things to make you feel great. Now, another thing that I normally do is also journaling. Now, I am not expecting you to start journaling every single day. That will mean I will set you for failure. I have started that game and I failed a few months in. Instead, what I decided to do, I choose to journal once a week. And that one day a week really helps me a lot to just process all of the things that have happened during the week and just write it down all of the things that comes to mind. For example, the other day, I was very grateful about my life in general and I am so pleased that things are going so well and I cannot complain. All the things that you can do for practicing physical self-care could be as simple as taking your dog out, go for a nice walk in the park, or go for a nice outdoor walk if the weather is beautiful, take a dance lesson, go for a swim if you have a membership like I do at the gym and sometimes you want to vary the activities that you do, go for a swim if you love swimming. All the things that you can do is either clean, reorganize your space, make sure that everything looks in the way that you want that to look. I am a control freak and this is probably one of the, one of the downside of living with me, that things can not be out of place. I constantly need to touch stuff, I need to move stuff and I need to always make sure that things are in the right place at all time. So that is part of my self-care. Things that I do for my physical body is taking baths. Now, again, returning to the video that I recorded for the first time, the video started with me taking a bath and I do love bathing. Honestly, guys, I, growing up, I've never had a bath. And so now that finally in my house, I have a bath for myself, it's just a dream that came true. I just love bathing. And some of the products that you want to maybe use could be a lush bum bath or any particular bum bath. They don't have to be lush. All the things that might help you, especially if you are very active as I do, is the Epsom salts. So Epsom salts are great to help you loosen up the muscles and help you with the muscle recovery, which I strongly recommend. So maybe take a look on Amazon or anywhere else and see if you can find some Epsom salts. Some things that you can do to help with your mental self-care. Try to turn off your phone. Try to get rid of that phone for at least 10 minutes a day. I mean, it's not that difficult. We are becoming so much more addicted to these things. And I just think we should try to take the time to stay away from scrolling from social media, stay away from all of that messages, stay away from chats. Just take an hour where you can maybe cook a meal, maybe spend some time with your children. Maybe when you're going out for that walk with your dog, try to not 
do anything with your phone. Leave it at home if you feel comfortable. All the things that you can do for your mental self-care could be learn something new. I have returned back to the photography, the videography, and these, what I am currently doing with you, this is helping me to break that barrier, break that wall that I might have built for myself. Another great mental self-care practice is drawing. We are losing all that amazing creativity that we all have within. And growing up, not many people know, but I used to be a graffiti artist and with my friends in Italy, we used to paint a lot. And when I'm saying a lot, I'm saying a lot. I used to paint a lot of graffiti and I have done so much with my friends back in the days, which I really hope I could do again. The emotional aspect is very important. So especially nowadays that mental health is such a big topic. Now, boys out there, don't feel afraid of asking for help. Now, it is really important that you're looking after your mental health and that it's part of your self-care routine. Do meditation, do journaling, do some yoga, do things that brings that awareness back towards your body. Notice how you feel. And if you're feeling low, it's okay for you to feel low. If you feel happy, it's great that you're feeling happy. But take the time to understand how you feel. That it should be your priority on a daily basis. One of my favorite part is to write it down a gratitude journal. There is an app on the phone that I use a lot and I use it every single night before I go to bed. It's called journal. You have only to write down three things that you're grateful for, three things that challenge you during the day or you think you would have done differently and that's it. It literally takes you three minutes to do your journal. And just the power of write it down and type things that you don't feel comfortable sharing how loud has a massive impact in your well-being. Beautiful people, I just want to say thank you so much for listening to my vlog and more than anything for sticking out up until the end. Now, if you like this video and you would like to support my channel, please make sure that you're clicking the like button below, make sure you subscribe and you're turning the notification bell Please leave a comment. I will be happy to read them. I will be happy to repost them and I will be happy to answer them. Thank you so much once again for your support. I can't wait to share with you my next week video, which will be in Santorini. I'll see you next week. Bye.